All right, so I want to give a little bit of an update. I have off and on been working with Unreal Engine. I would say I'm still I'm still pretty much a beginner as far as understanding how to build things um, and knowing how to solve problems quickly. I still have to refer to documentation, watch video tutorials, things of that nature. I think a lot of you probably do as well. If you're a developer, you're Googling stuff every day. Um, I, my comfort level with the engine still feels very new. I, I know how to do some basic things, create a level, um, get some static meshes, meshes imported, things like that. So one thing I learned how to do over the last day or so, just off and on trying to figure it out on my own without doing a whole lot of uh, searching. Uh, ultimately, I'll, I'll show you, I'll kind of talk through what I solved and um, maybe it'll help you guys out on kind of my process of figuring this out on my own because uh, I'm very much self-taught. So um, anyway, I want to first show you what I'm working on. Uh, if you go to Udemy, and I'll, I'll link this for you guys so that you can find it a little more easily, but if you go to Udemy, I'm already logged into my account, and the course that I have been using uh, for quite a while, probably almost two years now, um, it's probably a year and a half, two years old uh, that I purchased this. Um, let's see here. So let's let it load up. And let me just go back to my dashboard. So what you want to look for is the Unreal Engine uh, C++, learn C++ and make video games. This is like the most popular um, Unreal Engine tutorial series on Udemy. And I think it's a really good one. Um, for the price is not bad at all. I've spent way more money on learning than this in my career and I think there's just so much content in here it's well worth it. Um, so like I said I'll, I'll link to this guy uh, for you guys so that you can find it. Um, also I'd appreciate it if you use my link because um, I'm going to use an affiliate link um, so I'll get a little bit of We'll get a little bit of money for doing that. Not a lot, but um, I would appreciate it so that I can, you know, keep making this content for you guys. Um, anyways, uh, let me go back here and kind of show you what I've been working on. So the the video series teaches you how to create a level, a basic, you know, some basic terrain using the terrain tools. Um, you've probably seen some highlights of this uh, from start to finish um, with some of the content that I've been posting. So the other thing that I decided to do is the video series teaches you how to import a static mesh uh, of, a, of a tank. So we're building something very, a very basic version of World of Tanks kind of game. Um, what I decided to do since it's been so long and I really learn way better by doing and trying to figure out how to do it my own way. Um, once I have a basic understanding of how things work then I'll go and try to just take it a little bit step farther so that whatever I'm building is a little bit different than what everybody else is building uh, when you're learning these video uh, from these videos. So what I ended up doing is found a asset pack and I purchased it and it's kind of this polygon um, asset pack, a polygon battle royale. If you uh, search for that, you should find it online. But what you get is you get all of these uh, different meshes and textures. So if you kind of go in to here, we can look at uh, environments, for instance. So you get all these different environment things. And you, you can see I used a few of them. I used some rocks and some land um, masses that they include, things of that nature. I haven't used everything, but there's a lot of like buildings and props and all kinds of things I may or may not use in the actual game itself, but I might. Uh, I might replace some of these mountains with uh, buildings and put some stuff in here uh, to make it look a little more like a uh, city environment. Uh, instead of just this big landmass. But anyway, the other thing that I 
took it upon myself to learn how to do is I looked at their vehicles that come with the asset pack. Well, the vehicles uh, have a skeleton, uh, a skeletal mesh, and a um, and an accompanying uh, skeleton with the uh, with the mesh, and then also a physics asset as well. So this is a lot different than the way the video series has you set up your tank. So it took me a little bit of time to understand how to create my blueprint um, and import this, um, this skeletal mesh so that it would behave properly. So real quickly I'll show you what, what the end result is. Uh, I'm going to hit play here and you'll notice we have this tank. Um, I'm going to eject from the actual perspective of the camera and just kind of show you that the tank is in here. Um, you know, we can pick it up and it'll fall. And it just has some basic physics built into it. I need to actually make it way more so that it, you can't just throw it up in the air like that. Um, but just wanted to show you that that's working, but that took a little bit of time for me to figure out because the video series didn't explain how to use an asset like this. So what I ended up doing is I did some searching, some things that I found didn't really work. I couldn't get the physics to work uh, in my game world, so I opened up the third person template and I took a look at the mannequin and how it's set up because it has a very similar setup to my vehicle. So what I what I noticed is they had this capsule component and that this is the magic uh, sauce right here. Um, and I'll explain why here in a second. So this capsule component, you can actually turn on, um, where is it? So you can you could actually turn on simulate physics on the capsule if you want to, um, which is very important in the video series. The static mesh that they import they actually turn this feature on, uh, and what I ended up doing was creating a similar collider in my blueprint. So if you go over here to my game and we open up my blueprint for the tank. You'll notice I have a box collider around mine and then I've nested the tank inside of it. Uh, and then I have a spring arm and a camera set up just like they do in the video series. Uh, and also like the third person camera. Um, and then I wanted my view of the tank to be a little more top down instead of right behind the tank so that you can see a little bit more of what's going on. I may actually choose to move this out a little farther as well to make it really feel more of a top-down or uh, a little less third person, which would be more directly behind the vehicle. Um, so anyways, this is how I set it up. Now, the original um, video series would have you just have the tank itself as a static mesh, but since we have a skeletal mesh that has animations on it, you can't uh, apply, you can't simulate physics on that. There's a lot of problems with it. The game engine doesn't actually support it on a skeletal mesh. So in order for you to be able to simulate physics and have gravity applied to it, the solution was this box uh, component and adding that. And then as you can see, I turned on simulate physics and I applied a mass of 40,000 kilos because tanks are really heavy. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that. That was my solution. So what we ended up with is a tank that I can now program these animations so that we can end up turning the uh, turret with some uh, keyboard shortcuts and uh, or some keyboard input, or if I want to hook up a controller um, to the tank, you know, then I'll I'll have the option of doing that. And actually, my uh, my goal ultimately is to see if I could ship this or a simple version of this game to be playable on the Apple TV or uh, Amazon Fire or something of that nature. So um, I want this to be kind of a simple, fun game that you can play on your television uh, and just see how that works. So anyway, that's it.
for, for this uh, video, uh, it's probably gone a little longer than I wanted to. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I set that up. So if you ever have a, a skeletal mesh that you need to simulate physics on, the way I got to that and figured out what I needed to do there was I looked at the third person template and looked at the way the mannequin was set up because the mannequin actually has a skeletal animated mesh is what that um, that mannequin is made up of so it made sense because the tank itself if you actually click into it real quick before I go I'll show you how that's actually set up so if you click into this guy you will notice that it has a skeleton uh, and here's all of the pieces and parts that you can actually animate, um, which is what I'll be working on next, is programmatically animating some of these things. And if you look at the physics, you can see where the uh, physics are actually applied to certain parts of the tank. Because um, what we'll actually be able to do is we could simulate if this tank gets hit by something, we could cause it to collapse or we could make it blow up things like that because we could apply a physics to every single one of these parts if we want to so anyway pretty cool stuff and I'm pretty excited to keep moving forward on the video series finally getting something shipped I'm gonna do regular updates on my progress so if you guys have any questions comments or thoughts or suggestions I know I'm not doing everything correctly because I'm still learning so any suggestions or if you're seeing hey, there's an easier way to do this or do that, please let me know and I'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody have a great day and I will post again soon.